Texture is a frequently overlooked element in design. While we all readily acknowledge the impact that colors and shapes have on our perception of a space, it is the tactile quality of surfaces that can truly transform a space from boring to mesmerizing. That is why in this video, we're going to go through everything you need to know about texture, from the difference between tactile and visual texture, to how you can use texture to enhance the overall sensory experience of a room. Without further ado, let's get into it. You might feel like we're taking you back to your high school art or design class, but it's always good to start with the basics. What exactly is texture? Put simply, texture refers to the surface quality of a material, which can be experienced either through touch or observed indirectly through the eye. Textures help to keep a space from feeling flat or one-dimensional. It can be broadly categorized into two main types, tactile texture and visual texture, both of which are often overlooked. As the name suggests, tactile texture is produced by the physical surface of an object and is everything you feel by touch. Tactile texture makes spaces more engaging as it encourages individuals to physically interact with their environment. There's also a comfort and well-being aspect. Think of snuggling under your favorite soft throw or getting into bed between fine sheets. Those things feel really good, don't they? Neuro designer Isabel Schoval thinks that there is a physiological explanation behind why we like tactile materials. It is because they stimulate the feel-good hormone, oxytocin, which makes us feel calm and at peace. On the other hand, visual texture is experienced through your eyes, which is why it is sometimes called illusionary or simulated texture. Unlike tactile texture, which is experienced through touch, visual texture captivates the eye with display of colors, patterns, and shapes. Whether it is a digitally printed oil painting with thick textural brush strokes, or a smooth piece of marble with visible grains, visual texture can be manipulated to add richness and dimension to interior spaces. If you're still confused, try to understand visual texture through the artwork print example. At first glance, the print appears to have a rough surface with thick sculptural brush strokes, but upon touching it, you discover that the print itself is smooth to the touch. To put it simply, visual texture is the texture you see, which is two-dimensional in nature while tactile texture is what you feel. Both tactile and visual textures can be described by adjectives like smooth, rough, hard, soft, coarse, velvety, grainy, matte, or glossy. But I'd broadly say that they can be categorized into two different ranges, smooth to rough and soft to hard. They often elicit different emotional responses, much like how we react to different colors. Rough and uneven surfaces have raised texture, so they absorb more light and make colors seem darker. Rough textures will attract attention, activate eye movement, but can overshadow the use of form and color. Generally, rooms with lots of rough textured surfaces feel softer and warmer. As rough surfaces have more visual weight, spaces with focus on these textures have a more casual or rustic feel. Smooth textures are often unobtrusive, undemanding, and may be understated enough to allow showcasing other elements such as form, color, and space without becoming an additionally counted element. They also reflect more light, so they make colors seem lighter. In general, rooms that focus on smooth textures feel harder and colder, which can give them more of a modern or formal feeling. A soft texture is one that is inviting and pleasing to touch. It is friendly, cozy, and appealing and inviting like a smooth velvet armchair. Hard texture, on the other hand, is solid and firm to touch, which often evoke emotional reactions of strong, vigorous feeling, often masculine in nature. Think of metal, stone, or glass. You've probably seen images of 10 to $20 million luxury homes and noticed that many of them feel really cold. This is because they incorporate mostly smooth textures, shiny polished floors, have glass surfaces everywhere, as well as smooth green leather couches, marble, and smooth lacquered furniture. Yes, they look expensive, but many of them do not feel welcoming. At the end of the day, you don't want to go too far either way, whether that is too many smooth surfaces or too many rough ones. A room with a uniform texture will look blank and unsatisfactory, even if there's variation in other elements like color. On the other hand, a scheme based on a restrained palette of color can still provide interest through textural variety. Put it simply, you can often get away with using different shades and nuances of one color in a room, but you can rarely get away with using one and the same surface everywhere. 
The secret to good interior design is to work with textural contrasts and strike a balance between them. You need to include both smooth and rough textures, and of course soft and hard materials, as in this way, you have a greater sense of depth in your room. Striking a balance between soft and hard material is often not so much of an issue, as the majority of rooms have them both regardless. But incorporating smooth and rough is what many people often overlook. A big reason for this is due to the explosion of MDF and chipboard furniture, which has democratized interior styling. But it has also contributed to the increase in flat, harsh feelings of many modern homes, especially ones that lack other surfaces to provide variety. If you sense that room is a bit lifeless, this could be one of the reasons. Now that you know the significance of texture and design, here are some ways that you can incorporate texture into your own space. The main way to achieve textual contrast is through layering. For instance, layer a soft or patterned rug over your hardwood or tile floor, or layer pillows with subtle patterns over your plain sofa. Add different elements like linen upholstery, handmade pottery, or timber with visible grains. For example, a curtain with a coarse texture has much more impact on a room than a small cushion made from the same material. Scale and surface area is very important in determining the impact of texture. Try to mix textured items of larger scale with smaller ones to create a sense of balance and proportion throughout your room. You can highlight or downplay texture by adjusting the quality and direction of light. For instance, casting strong light from an angle can accentuate surface texture, whereas using the fuse light will soften and diminish it. Natural elements are inherently highly textural. Adding in materials like stone and wood, and of course, plants, will introduce organic texture into your space and will add a sense of warmth and character. Many designers will say that contrast in a design are what makes design successful. One approach is through juxtaposition, that is placing two contrasting objects, items, or pieces of furniture side by side so that the difference between them gets emphasized. For example, you often see pictures of a rough terracotta vase on top of a smooth marble countertop, or the use of smooth brass fixtures on a highly textured tile or backsplash. Consider how you can contrast patterns against plain surfaces. Incorporating patterns is the easiest way to create the illusion of texture. This can range from something as simple as a cushion, throw, lampshade, or upholstery all the way to wallpaper and tiles. While I acknowledge the practicality and accessibility of foam materials, exercise caution when incorporating them. If there's too much in a room, our brain instantly registers it, making the space feels off. In general, we should strive to use real materials, things like solid wood, real brass and marble, instead of their full counterparts. But I understand that they're definitely not friendly to our wallets. So if and when selecting foam materials, I'll personally be aware of these two things. If you like marble that has a distinct grain or pattern, settling for their full counterpart will not give you the look you're after. In fact, it will do the complete opposite as your brain will instantly recognize that it is fake. You may be fooled looking at it from miles away, but the moment you come close, that perception will turn sour. I like to compare this to wearing loud and fake branded goods. It is counterintuitive because you're essentially announcing the whole world to look at you, but there's no craftsmanship or inherent quality to appreciate or look at. While they may be affordable, low quality foam materials will have a short lifespan and poor performance. So use them sparingly and only on things that you don't frequently interact with or things that you don't expect to last. One exception to this is maintenance. Sometimes, foam materials are chosen for practicality, such as a polyester and linen blend curtain instead of pure linen. The good news is that there's also a middle ground here, veneer. For example, furniture with veneered wood means that the core is made from a different material but the outer layer is wrapped in real wood, albeit a very thin slice. Similarly, you can get engineered wood flooring, which is essentially a real solid wood, but just on the top layer. This will give you the texture and tactility that you're looking for, but at a much more reasonable price compared to the whole thing. One last thing to consider when selecting texture is upkeep. Smooth, flat surfaces show dust and fingerprints, but are easier to clean and maintain while uneven surfaces, 
such as deep carpet pile, conceal dirt but are harder to clean. Smooth surfaces with visual textures, such as finished wood, combine the best features of both. They conceal dirt and are easier to clean. Understanding the nuances of texture can truly transform the way we design and experience spaces. By embracing a balanced approach that incorporates both tactile and visual textures, you can elevate your space and stop it from feeling flat, dull, or boring. If you enjoyed this video, check out this video on lighting and how to elevate a builder-grade cookie-cutter home. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.